Hi guys, it's Ariana. Welcome back to my channel. So for tonight's video, we're going to be reading some more scary stories. So as per usual, I have my wicked candle not lit. It's just in here making my whole room smell absolutely amazing. It smells like caramel apple. I tell you guys this in every single one of my videos because I just think it's like good luck or something. I don't know. So as per usual, please ignore the cars. They're super loud. I know you guys say you can't hear them. I just like to give the disclaimer anyway, just in case for some reason you guys do hear them. I'm super excited to jump into these stories. I've gotten permission from a bunch of different Reddit authors and I don't have any like personal stories from like Instagram or anything in this video, but I'm hoping to have some in the next couple. Hopefully once you guys send some in, hint, hint, please send me in your stories because I love reading your personal stories. Your personal stories are the best and it's just a little bit more creepier when they're like your own personal accounts and they're not just like fictitious stories online. I do think that's just adds a little bit more of a spooky vibe to the videos. I also wanted to ask you guys, do you guys prefer this white backdrop with like my purple and pink lights or would you guys rather me have a black backdrop for these spooky vibes? Please let me know in the comments down below. I've been thinking about switching it back to the black backdrop just for like the spooky videos and then having these ones for like my review. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys would prefer, what would be more spooky, and let's just jump on into the story. So for the first story, I'm going to be reading from the short scary stories section. So this one's not too long, but it's really, really creepy and I'm super excited to read it. So this is from the Reddit user Copy Cakes Wow, and the title is, I have to keep looking. I was awoken in the middle of the night by a frantic looking man. I was a taken back ready to grab the closest thing to me to defend myself. I was about to let out a yell when I saw the look of manic desperation on his face trying to shush me. Please, please, I don't want to hurt you. You have to pretend like you're looking for something or they'll kill you. The man trembled, holding his finger up, trying to silence me. He immediately stepped away and walked towards my closet, opening it and rifling through my belongings. He mouthed, please to me as he continued to search. I was half out of my bed when I heard the shuffle of a dozen feet around my house. Doors swung open, plates crashed to the ground, furniture toppled over, footsteps began to stomp towards my room, and in a bit of desperation and blind trust, I hopped out of my bed and began opening the drawers closest to me. The door swung open. Three, maybe four other men entered the room, immediately combing through the area. They dispersed, finding their own nooks and crannies to ransack. The man and I eyed each other, as we pretended to rummage through my belongings. One of the men started to scour near us, his hands and fingers bloodied and worn. I didn't know what they were searching for. I just knew that I needed to pretend to look for it too. After a while, my entire room had been turned inside out. The men marched outside and we followed suit. I walked out of my room to see my house in absolute shambles, greeted by more strangers that had also ransacked the area. Are they looters? I thought to myself, staring straight ahead trying not to distinguish myself in the crowd as we walked out. I followed our would-be mob outside and was paralyzed at the sight when I hit the streets. A mass of other bloody looking scavengers tossed through the area. They rummaged through the cars and bins, entering every alley and establishment they could. On the ground were corpses, disfigured as if mauled. My heart sank, knowing that could have been me had the man not begged me to join the search. I could hear the cries and pleas from the ground. The merciless mobbing swept through all of the buildings and streets. Those that didn't join or turned away from the violence quickly met the same fate. What was I to do? It's been a day since I awoke. My hands are weary and stained. I've not made any effort to communicate with the mindless horde around me. They don't know I'm not one of them, as long as I keep looking. I still don't know what I'm searching for. Perhaps a place to hide? Maybe something to defend myself? All I know is I have to keep looking. That one was really well written and really, really scary. I got goosebumps all over reading that. That's absolutely terrifying. And I don't know what you're searching for. That's fucking scary. <laughs> so thank you so much to Cupcakes Wow. And let's just jump into the next story. So the next story is from the scary stories side of Reddit. And it is from the Reddit author Zomsta12. And this is a personal experience and they have it titled Creepiest Experience of My Life. I was sleeping until somebody placed their hand on me. It was a small, soft hand so I immediately assumed my sister or mother had come into my room to wake me up for whatever reason. I opened my eyes, but found myself unable to move. Then this figure with their hand on me started laughing. It was a low, weird voice and a slow laugh. It sounded nothing like my sister or mom, so somebody else had woken me up. I try to turn over and see who, but can't. I'm in sleep paralysis. I can only move my eyes. So I turn them as far as possible to the side to see who is in my peripheral vision. I can clearly see their arm and shoulder, and it's a massive shoulder. This is obviously where I get a bit panicky, because this confirms that it's somebody else in my room. The creepy laugh continues, 
then the figure moves a bit and I'm able to see it. A big, bald, non-human looking face that is a bit distorted is looking at me. It looks like the silence alien from Doctor Who. At this point, I'm really panicked and realize this can't be real. However, I'm still paralyzed while this thing is in my room, touching me and laughing. Why won't I wake up from this dream? I kept thinking. Shortly after I'm able to move again and this thing is no longer there, I took a moment to recover and wrote this. I'm still not 100% sure if this was all a dream and I simply dreamed of waking up in my bed or if I was indeed awake and hallucinated it, but it would be weird to have sleep paralysis in a dream. So I think it was probably the latter. And that's how the end of the story. Oh my God, that's creepy. I've only experienced sleep paralysis once and I talked about that in another video and it was awful. I would not recommend, don't ever wanna experience it again. And I'm glad that it's literally only happened once. <laughs> so fingers crossed, it never happens again. And the next story that I wanna read is from the paranormal section. So this is, I'm assuming another true encounter. And this one is titled, Past Father Called Me on My Phone. And this is from the Reddit user Cameron DBCW. Hello, I'd like to share an experience I had back in 2017. To give some backstory, my father passed away back in 2008 when I was 14. He had a flip phone and his voicemail was him saying his name, Dan Crouch. When he passed away, we kept his cell phone so we could call it and hear his voice. One day, my mom purchased me a cell phone and she wanted to call the tech guy to transfer my dad's voicemail sound onto my phone. He said it transferred over, but we found out later it didn't. The flip phone was handed in to the phone store so we lost the recording of his voice. Backstory over. Fast forward to 2015. I found a woman I fell in love with. We hung out all day, every day. Didn't leave her house for at least a week. One day, when I spent the night at her place, we were both laying in bed and she was cleaning out her voicemails. She had about 10 or so, and after she deleted a few, the voicemail says, the following message will be deleted from your inbox. Your message from Dan Crouch is not available. To play this message, press one. My father sent my girlfriend a voicemail that didn't contain a message, but it was sent from him because his voice came up saying his name, exactly like his voicemail. I recorded that message through a video camera and then my girlfriend deleted the message. Fast forward to 2017. Both my girlfriend and I were hanging out at my house when she was going through her voicemails again. This happened again, exactly the same thing. My father's voice, but no message. And that's how the end of the story. Oh my God, that's so kind of cool actually. I don't know if that was a true story or not because it doesn't say it was or not, but that's really, really cool. And if it was a true story, then that's amazing. And I'm sorry you lost your father, but it's really cool that he is trying to contact you. So that's really fun. <laughs> Reddit user is the Park Ranger Baker, and this is from the No Sleep section. And this one is titled, I'm a park ranger and I found a town that doesn't exist. My name is Samuel Baker. I'm a Yellowstone National Park Ranger and I need some advice. I've spent my entire career fighting wildfires for the National Park Service. And after two decades in the field, I thought I saw everything. Then, about four hours ago, an entire town just appeared in the middle of Yellowstone National Park, and the other ranger and I are the only ones who've been in it. We're not alone, however, as you might expect from something appearing out of nowhere inside one of America's most famous parks. The town is home to many people, some of whom have been here for years. They all seem perfectly normal, and they aren't aware that they live inside a national park. My partner, Thomas, was the first to notice the town. He'd driven into the valley a few hours before dawn one morning and saw a brand new sign on the road, Welcome to Hungry Horse, it read. When he drove past the next bend in the road, he saw the motel. That's when he turned around to come and get me. The two of us had driven up the valley together in our trusty old Chevy Blazer and taken the long way around because he hadn't wanted to pass through the town until we were sure what it was. We parked at the base of the mountain and hiked up. We walked across the railroad tracks and past a small gas station with a lone oil drum full of diesel fuel and other filled with water. The street was lined with old cars, some of which looked like they'd been there for a while, others which had probably just arrived that morning. Hungry Horse wasn't a ghost town or even abandoned. It was thriving. Thomas and I entered the town cautiously because despite appearances, this place could be dangerous. While we didn't run into any trouble, we did notice that everyone seemed indifferent to the fact that they just appeared out of nowhere. Most of them ignored us, although a few gave us strange looks. Some of these people look familiar, I said looking over at Thomas. He nodded. I know what you mean, Sam. I recognize a couple people in the diner too. It's weird. It's weird. Those words echoed in my head as I watched the man carrying a bucket walk down the sidewalk. It's weird. I repeated silently to myself. My eyes followed his movements. The man carried himself with confidence and purpose, but he never looked up from where he was walking. 
Instead, he stared straight ahead and continued forward without looking back. He disappeared around the corner of a building, and I noticed another person staring directly at me. He was tall and thin, wearing a black hiking jacket. His face was pale, and he was bald. He was standing in the doorway of a small coffee shop. He reminded me of a missing hiker we had searched for last week. That's when I realized why I recognized some of the people here. They all are people who have vanished from national parks. We spoke to everyone we could find. Some refused to talk, others were friendly enough, but none of them knew anything about why they were there. As far as they were concerned, they lived in Hungry Horse, Montana. They weren't sure exactly when they arrived. A lot of them couldn't remember much before arriving in Hungry Horse. They also told us that they'd been there for years. Many of them had been born and raised in the town and believed it was the real deal. They all knew the townsfolk by name and went to school with them. One woman, an older lady named Irene, told us that she had no idea that she had been reported missing. She worked at the local hardware store and had been living in Hungry Horse for more than 45 years. What about your husband? I asked. Do you have children? Grandchildren? She shook her head. No, I've never been married. How do you feel about being here? Do you miss anywhere else? Your family? Again, she shook her head. No, this is my home. As far as she knew, this was the only home she'd ever known. I tried to ask if she missed her family, but she just smiled and told me that her family was right here in Hungry Horse. We thanked her and left the hardware store. Hopping back onto our park ranger truck, we drove deeper into the town. I really don't like this, Sammy, Thomas said. I've had a feeling of being watched ever since we entered town. I looked over at him. He was staring at a man standing in a large semi-trailer outside the diner. The man was holding a jug of milk. I couldn't help but think of the hiker we'd found dead last week. Sam, are you listening to me? I snapped back to reality and looked at my partner. Sorry, what did you say? I said, I think we should leave. I don't want to be here anymore. I looked around the town. There were so many people here. So many people who shouldn't be here. All of them were perfectly normal. Some of them even knew each other. How could there be so many people in a town that didn't exist? I agree, let's go. We drove away from the town and back to the ranger cabin. Thomas was still shaking. I'm going to call this in. The whole thing is bullshit, but we better document it anyway. I mean, how could an entire town full of missing people just appear in the middle of Yellowstone? I nodded, okay, I'll be in the cabin. I think I need some time to process all this shit. I sat down on the couch and closed my eyes. It all felt unreal. I kept thinking about the hiker we'd found out in the woods last week. He died while he was out on a hike in the wilderness. He'd been alone and confused, but I just saw him alive and well in a town that doesn't exist. I opened my eyes and looked around. I took in a deep breath and let it out. It smelled like wood smoke and pine. I stood up and started pacing the room. What am I supposed to make of all this? I asked myself. Is this some kind of sick joke? Did the government put a town in Yellowstone for some reason? What if it's not a town? Maybe it's a cover up for something worse? There was a knock at the door. It startled me out of my daydream. Come in, I yelled. Two men came inside, both dressed in black suits. Are you the one in charge here? One of them asked. I looked at him and nodded. The man was wearing a badge on his chest and a gun on his hip. He looked like an FBI agent. I'm about to go talk to them, and I don't know if they'll believe me. What the fuck do I do? And that's how the end of the story. Oh my God, that's so fucking good. That's so creepy. That's a really good story. It's in the no sleep section, so it's a fictional story, but that was a really good story. It was really well written. So thank you so much to Park Ranger Baker for allowing me to read your story. That is an awesome story. And when I found it earlier, I was really interested. Like I could visualize everything and it was just super fucking creepy. So I really liked that one. And the last story that I wanna read is another basement story. So I wish I had found this one yesterday, but what do you know? I'm adding it into this video instead because last yesterday's video, I had a really creepy story about a basement and it was a fairly long one. So let's just jump on into this. And this one is from the short scary story section and it's from angel underscore love underscore eight. This one's just titled The Basement. I've been babysitting people around my neighborhood for years now, but after I moved to a new place, it took me a while for me to find a place to babysit. I've always loved babysitting, but I don't think I'll ever do it again after what happened. The parents want to go for a date night. Nothing too bad. I've done that before. They had some pretty average rules, except for one. Don't go in the basement. I figured, hey, maybe there's something dangerous down there, or maybe there's storage and they don't want us to get hurt. Maybe they keep valuables down there and they don't want it to get stolen. I didn't think their son would end up running down there, but of course, I had to follow him. The smell got to me immediately. I almost started puking. But strangely, he didn't seem phased by it, and he started giggling. I understood why I wasn't allowed to go down there, when I saw the blood and I saw the pieces. One of them was a head of a young woman who seemed to be even younger than me. 
One seemed to be an older man's arm, hairy and gross. I picked up the kid and ran out of the house with him in my arms. I told the police, but by the time the sting was over and the police had searched everything, they found all the bodies, including the ones in the basement and backyard. The parents didn't come back. They never came back. I don't need a babysitter anymore. I'm the one who needs a babysitter, since I didn't have the heart to give up the cute little boy. But sometimes he asked me weird questions, like where's the basement? And that's how they ended the story. That one is super short, but super fucking creepy. And no, thank you. That is just gross. <laughs> so thank you so much to um, angel underscore love underscore eight for allowing me to read your really, really creepy story. And I wish I had more stories to read, but I messaged a couple of Reddit authors today and not all of them have gotten back to me yet. There's one that I really want to read, but they haven't responded yet. So I'm waiting for them to get back to me. And once they get back to me, I will have more stories to read. So I'm sorry this video isn't going to be as long as my other ones. I think my other ones are sitting around like the 26 minute mark. This is probably going to be around the 15, 16 minute mark. That's still fairly long. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below for more content like this. If you have any paranormal stories, ghost stories, creepy stories, let's not meet stories, or any of your own personal stories that you wanna send me, please check out my socials down below. Everything is listed in my description box and it'll also be pinned in a comment in my comment section. So you guys can message me and send me your creepy stories whenever you guys want and I will definitely read them. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys at the next video. Bye.